Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, the Silver Fox. Now, as we know, recently, uh, Mary Black had a go at the SNP, had a go particularly against Sturgeon and the sort of the cult, the personality cult of Sturgeon that reigned and ruled over the party for so long. She said it was divisive, it was damaging. Um, it stopped others rising. It stopped free expressions because she ruled so ruthlessly. Um, and for that, I actually think she was right. I did mention at the time, it's very weird to say that she was right, but she was right. But she's also, uh, and this is where it's causing a lot more problems, of course, has had a go at her soon-to-be ex-colleagues in Westminster by saying that, in her opinion, some of them are far too comfortable in their roles. Um, what I think she means is, why are you not up there fighting and slagging off and insulting everyone all day, every day? This is exactly why you've got no friends, Mary Black. But Joanna Cherry, a hard-working, intelligent woman, chose the wrong side politically, I think, but I think no one can take away from the fact that she is intelligent, she is hard-working, and within the various committees and things she does, she does do some good, I feel. It's just a shame she joined the wrong party. I think if she'd have uh, joined maybe the Tories, she'd have been a better MP. But that's by and by, we're not there. What we are there for is that um, Joanna Cherry is now fighting back against Mary Black. And you have to ask what's popping her balloon. There's nothing worse than checking and cherry, popping your cherry. Let's have a look, see why Mary Black is getting um, a bit of a comeuppance from Joanna Cherry. Here goes. So Joanna Cherry hits back at Mary Black after she said some Nat MPs are far too comfortable. Now, she just seems to think that, you know, you've got to be up there and attack, attack, attack all the time. Whereas jo uh, Joanna Cherry is basically of the opinion, you have to work with these people. Yes, they're the opposition, but they're not necessarily the enemy. Um, this is something, of course, attributed to um, the, uh, the the Tory party. I can't remember who it was. It might well have been Churchill um, or it might have been Ted Heath, I think. But the, the line was that the opposition are in, when you're, when you're a Conservative Prime Minister, the opposition sit in front of you, but the enemy sit behind you. Um, because often the two are not the same things. Anyway, the outspoken Edinburgh South MP, oh sorry, South West MP, hit back at the Westminster Deputy Leader's criticism of her own group of MPs, pointing out that she, Mary Black, may not understand how politics works. Of course she doesn't. She doesn't understand anything. She's a, a charmless oik, isn't she? Wearing a dad's old suit. Anyway, Mary Black has sparked a public SNP row over her claims some nationalist MPs were too comfortable living life as a politician in London. And despite serving as the party's Westminster deputy leader, she launched a broadside against some of her fellow MPs. Um, yeah, which is bound to go well, you know, it's uh, going to go down like a cup of cold sick, isn't it? Mary Black, you don't actually do anything. You don't understand how anything works. You're an obnoxious, hate-filled bigot. You stink. And you're constantly rubbing ground up Kit Kat into your gums and up your nose. It's the finest Colombian Kit Kat money can buy. Anyway, we previously told how a wide ranging interview with Times Radio, she, t she hit out at her past and present colleagues, whom she claimed loved the prospect of working at the House of Commons. She said, I've seen folk who you would have thought would have been the first one marching to the border with a claymore, but now absolutely love being in London. I wouldn't have expected that. I would entirely expect that. You know, it's called the Dolce Vita. You bring these people down from, you know, various places all across. They get put into London. They're paid a lot of money. They're in opulent circumstances. They work in the oldest parliament. You know, well, not the oldest parliament in the world, but one of them. Um, they're fine there. They're surrounded by grandeur. Of course they're going to like it. Who wouldn't? It's human nature, isn't it? Uh, anyway, she said, I will not specify if they are current or not, but yes, she says, I've come across ones where I've thought, hmm, you appear slightly more comfortable than I think you should be. Well, nobody cares what you think, Mary Black. Your opinions are your own. Their opinions are theirs. And if they like it, so what? What's it got to do with you? To think otherwise is sheer arrogance, isn't it? Anyway, Miss Black is stepping down as an MP at the next general election and thus improving the smell of the chamber. This is after being elected as one of the youngest ever representatives in 2015. She's courted controversy for her accent, which is not real. She comes from a nice middle class family and uh, she tries to be very uh, Doric in her speech. Uh, to the point where some Scots can't even understand what she's trying to say. 
she's trying to make that difference and hey if you can't understand me you're just racist you know and that's her client her claim you know but i just say go to yourself you know anyway i've spoken edinburgh southwest mp joanna cherry um, and i'm going to just pick up this picture here just to show you look at the colors she's wearing they're the suffragette colors just want to make that out yeah she's a turf she's a lesbian turf because as a lesbian she appreciates the beauty of a woman and uh, she doesn't want to have the beauty of a woman ruined by a penis don't care anyway writing in a column for um uh, oh sorry she told her that there's a difference between being comfortable and doing the job you were elected to do. Sorry, missed that bit with my little tangent. Anyway, writing in her column for the pro-Indie newspaper, The National, that rag, Pravda, she said, I want to take issue with what Mary Black said about some SNP MPs being too comfortable at Westminster. It is not easy being an opposition MP for years on end. But with painstaking work and the building of cross-party consensus, good things can be achieved. This is what people don't realise. That laws, when they come in, are virtually always as the result of all parties agreeing to them. They go into the, thing, the, the committee stage and you will have government, opposition, you know, third party, uh, sometimes an independent. And they sit on these committees and they thrash out the details of these laws. And they get things changed here or they push something there or they'll drop something because it's problematic. But they... And they cut deals and everything is a deal. Everything's a deal. We, we really, really want this. We'll drop that, if, you know, but let us have this, that sort of thing. And that's what goes through. But it's all parties. And yes, the SNP and the Lib Dems and the Green one and so forth. The couple of handful of individual, uh, what do you call them, independents. But they all sit on these committees. You have to get on. You have to communicate. You have to agree. It is consensus politics. The grandstanding you see at PMQs or FMQs it's just for the cameras. Um, it's just there. It's not really a thing. It does, that it's really it's pointless because it, all it is is just holding them to account for half an hour once a week. It really is meaningless uh, because most of the ninety nine point nine percent of the stuff gets done in committee stage. Anyway, Miss Black was so frustrated about her time in London that she tried to get her friend and staffer Robert Innes to replace her as an MP, and even threatened to quit the SNP if he did not pass the vetting. But he suffered a humiliating defeat locally, with members instead backing Jacqueline Cameron to contest the Paisley and Renfrewshire seat. Now, here's the thing. How bad, I mean, literally, how bad do you have to be to fail the vetting for the SNP? They have had convicted thieves. They have had liars. They've had people who, as we say, have got very shady pasts involving the touching up of people. And they're still passing vetting you have people who've done some awful things still passing vetting this robert innes failed wow how bad are you to fail for the snp they'll put anyone up they'd put cripping up if they thought he could win with a yellow rosette anyway in response miss cherry pointing to the work of nationalist colleagues including ronnie cowan patricia gibson carol monaghan marion fellows all of whom are little known in Scotland outside of the political bubble. She added, we must be present and performing our jobs at Westminster, as well as spending time working in our constituencies. And the SNP are not an abstentionist party. Those who want that policy to change need to do the work to build a campaign and get it debated and changed at conference. Yeah, basically saying, if you don't like it, sod off. Absolutely sod off. Um, and it, it, it's just who she is. It's just... She's just a hate-filled individual. Who the hell would vote for her? But she was wearing the yellow rosette. And so the morons that vote for the SNP voted her in. But I bet they regret every minute of it because she's just not very good. She's very unlikable. She's very aggressive. She's filled with a lot of inner loathing. She really does hate herself. And that comes through with hatred for everything and everyone else. Anyway, I shall round off there. We'll move on. We've got lots of stories, but I uh, don't know how many I'm going to get done. Don't want to uh, spend all day on a Saturday here because my wife wants me to do things. You know how it is. Anyway, we'll round up and come up and we'll finish this video. Now, nobody knows when the election will be. Um, there are some pundits who still think it's going to be May, even if Rishi is saying it's later in the year. I, I've always maintained it will probably be October, uh, simply because they want the... Uh, the budget to go in they want the effects of the budget to be felt and they're looking at the falling interest rates through the year they want people to have a bit more money in their pocket and feel better 
Uh, and so, you know, I've always said it'll likely be October, which means that you've got nearly a year of Mary Black sitting there, annoying everyone around her um, and having a pop at her colleagues. Her colleagues will probably start distancing themselves from her. One, she's done as an MP. We know she's a dead duck MP now, but also because she's so bloody obnoxious. But uh, she's always been obnoxious and ever so slightly smelly. Anyway, I shall stop. Thank you very much for watching. We'll let Mary Black get on and have a loving, tender relationship with uh, the Colombian Kit Kats. And uh, we'll let Joanna Cherry get back to working with her colleagues and um, forming relationships. Because I think Joanna Cherry will be there for quite a while. I think she's in a fairly safe seat, even um, after the general election. I think she's in one of the safest seats, isn't she? Anyway, till next time, stay safe, stay well, and I will speak to you later. Bye.